You are watching the Movacon HMI Editor Basics self-guided video tutorial series. In this video, I'll guide you through the basics of arrays and structures. I'll explain how they import through PLCI, and then we'll create a symbol which uses a structure and we'll add it to the library. Hi, I'm Matt Pelletier. For this video, I am assuming you've already completed the previous videos in the series. There is no mini lab exercise for this section, but I do want to show the final outcome, which is simply a screen with the feedback position, velocity, and torque for each axis in the system. And back in the editor, the way you should do this is through the symbol libraries, where you can just simply drag that custom symbol into your project. Let's start now at the beginning and talk a little bit about the array data type first. To make an array, you create a variable and just choose for the data type fixed length array. You can make an array of any elementary data type except string, and it can have a maximum of 4096 data elements. I'll just go ahead and demonstrate that now, and you can please follow along in the real time DB. We'll just go to variables and create, like we've done before, a new variable. I'll call it my array, and then choose the data type to be fixed length array. Apply that, and you choose the array element. For example, maybe we want float. You do need to go under advanced and set the address, meaning that the array elements will start counting at element zero in this case, that's normal, and put in parentheses the total number. So maybe I want 20 in this array, 0 through 19. And now let's see how to use this. Let's make a new screen for this section. Add a new screen. I'll just call it my screen. Okay. And I'll make it a little bit smaller so it can pop up eventually. And how about a cancel button? Maybe I'll steal one here from the recipe delete cancel, which is just a screen close command. I'll copy that and paste it in here at the bottom again. All right. Now let's see if we can put some of this data in an edit box display from the array. I've got the edit box display. It's a float, so I will give it a format value that includes decimal places there. Let's change the max value and the min value with a negative here. So we can go plus and minus. And now the edit box display variable. Let's look for that my array. And you can choose one of these elements. Let's say I choose number 10. But the beauty of arrays is that you don't have to leave the array element as a fixed value. You can put a variable right in there. So let's delete that and I'll create a new variable called n. n and a word data type is appropriate. And let's show that variable n in a different edit box display with a more simple format value here. So this has n, oh, and this one was supposed to have the variable, let's change, okay, my array element number n. Okay, now let's run this. I'll show you a little trick for running without communications. You can hold down this run button and you've got run screen. That's different than start project. Run screen will just be this screen and it does not require communications to be working. It theoretically starts up a little quicker too. But before I use that, I should remember to remove the password protection on my project under users and user groups. Enable password manager. I'll just deselect that. And now run screen. Okay. So here I can adjust the array index, and this is the element value. Maybe I'll put in an element value here, number one, two, three, and then go up to element number one, put in a 4.56. See the idea? And I could look at this in the watch page here. I'll go to watch number three and add filter for my array. I'll sort this here by item. There's zero, there's one. I thought zero, I had a 1.23. Element one, 4.56, and so on. 
go straight up to element 10 and put in a 789. So this is just a quick overview. If you've worked with arrays before, I think you know all the interesting uses they have. So I'll just take it this far and let's go back now to do structures. Okay, for structures, you first have to create the structure prototype. And like arrays, structures can only use elementary data types. You would create a new variable and then assign that structure data type to your variable. And like we've seen with the sysvar structure, you use the colon to separate the variable name from the name of the member within that structure. Back in the project here, you can look under real-time DB to get the structure prototypes. And except for sysvar, the majority of these were imported when we imported the variables at the very beginning of the class. And I'll talk more about that in a minute. But first, let's make our own here. Right-click, New Structure Definition. And let's say I want one called Motor Command. And except that, you right-click to add structure members. So let's say this is going to be a structure to command a motor with the run command. That would be data type bit. And another one now to, uh, let's say, control the speed command. I'll call that here speed. Maybe that should be a data type of a float. Okay. And how about one more here? A new struct member for direction. For example, forward reverse shortest path and previous direction, we might need a byte. All right, so that's the structure definition. In MotionWorks IEC, we'd call that the data type definition. And now to create a variable, why don't I go straight into an edit box display. I'll just copy this one here and delete the existing variable. Let's say we want to put one of those elements in here, maybe the speed. We need to create that variable first. So I will create one called uh, my motor one and then change the definition of the data type to that structure called motor command. Okay. And within this structure now, I'll choose the element speed. I should be able to find here in the real time DB again, my motor with the different members and we can run this real quick and I'll change the value. Pull it up here, my motor. There's the two for the speed that I'm changing. Okay. Now let me say a little bit more about all of these structure definitions. Where did these all come from? Well, they all came from the MotionWorks IEC project when we imported it. And for example, there's this variable called GX data, which is a complex structure. It's a structure that has another structure element called ref with an element axis num. There's all these main elements here. There's the PRM structure within that data structure, the home structure. There's the latch structure, which has the trigger structure and the input structure. There's the cam structure, which includes within it the engaged data structure. There's also the disengaged data structure. So what's happening back here at Movicon is it's flattening that out and creating separate variables with each of those structures and uses the name of the structure element to build that variable name. So you do get the data from a complex structure with multiple levels in MotionWorks IEC, but it's broken out to a single level. So to summarize, here is the way that the import works from MotionWorks IEC to MoveCon. If you have an array of just regular elementary data types in MotionWorks.ec, that will import directly into Movicon. If you make an array of arrays in MotionWorks.ec, you will get separate variables called array one, array two, array three, each of those being an array themselves. If you create in MotionWorks.ec a structure of simple elementary data types, again, that will import directly to Movicon. But if you have an array of structures, you will end up in Movicon with a separate structure variable for every array element. That's the same pattern as what you'd get if you have an array of arrays, array of structures, just break those up into uh, structure one, structure two, structure three, all with the same data type. If you have a structure that includes arrays inside of it, that's a little more complicated. You'll get one structure variable 
That includes only the elementary data types, if there are any, and then separate variables for each array element of the included arrays. And finally, if you have a structure that includes structures, like you saw here in our example, you get one structure variable with just the elementary data types, and then separate variables for each of the structure elements. And that's how we end up with all of these structured prototypes and all of these separate structure variables from that one variable. Okay, so now for the last part of this section, which is creating a symbol, we can use our knowledge of arrays and structures to create this symbol. So follow along with me, and I'll be looking at the PowerPoint for this. The symbol will be a collection of these edit box displays, so I'll copy this one here and paste it. It's pretty close. I don't want that variable. Let's put in a group here of three of these. One, two, three. And we wanted to add a little text label to the left. Maybe I can pull that out of one of the other screens, like the control screen. Copy that and paste it in here. This one will be POS for position. I'll copy it to create VEL and TRQ. So far, there's nothing quite extraordinary about this. And normally what you do if you wanted to put the feedback position in here is you would find an element of a structure. So for example, we could go to this GX data PRM element called actual position. And it puts in here the structure name and the structure element. Let's just do that for velocity here also. Actual velocity. Okay, and now torque. Actual torque. And this would work. But you'd have to rebuild this or copy and paste and edit like we've been doing. These items can be grouped together to create a symbol, but there's a special format that you should use then for the edit box display variable when you're using structures. And that is to delete the specific structure and leave only the colon and the structure element. The specific structure will be defined later. So we'll do that here for all three of these. Delete everything before the colon on all of these here. Okay, so we've got colon actual position, colon actual velocity, colon actual torque. Now you group these together and right click on them. You see the symbol menu. Group it together as symbol and you're presented with a new property called default struct. So this already is a symbol and I could copy it, paste a couple more here. Let's lay those out a little better. And then for each of these, the default struct, I will just choose each of the axes, the X data PRM. This will be Y. I'll choose the default struct G Y data PRM. And this one will be Z default struct G Z data PRM. And I think you'll agree that's a lot quicker than having to change these fields one at a time. Let's run this here. Now this one does communicate to the controller, so I want to run with start project so that my comms work. And there I see I have some data as the motors are going through a, an extended automated sequence here. And let's go back to the editing environment. Technically, this is a symbol and you could easily reuse it by just opening this project and copying it between one project to the other. But you could add it to your installation of Movicon using the symbol library. Okay, so let's do that. I'm going to delete the extras and make this my prototype. In the properties, we recommend that you, for the default struct, don't put an actual variable in there. Instead, put the name of the data type that you expect to see here. And we were using axis parameter struct. So I'll just type in there, axis parameter struct. Additionally, you probably don't want it to show up as symbol 11. So at the top here, you can change the object name and I'll call it servo underscore feedback and apply that. You'll see the name when you click off and click back on for it to refresh. And that's what this slide is referring to here in the training material. The final step is to add it to the library. 
Now you probably want to create your own library and then add it to the library file with right click. So let's do that. Remember the symbol library is in the same window as properties by default. And I'll go here to new template library. And I usually call mine Yaskawa Technical Training Service, YTTS. And I'll right click on it under symbol, add to library. I can choose this one, YTTS, that I just created, and open, and now here it is. And like before, I could just drag them in. Here it does present you with the opportunity to choose the axis parameter struct that you want. So I'll do that here, that will be GY data PRM. Okay, and the next one, you could always just click OK, and then put it in place and adjust the properties like we did before. Either way works fine. Change the default struct to Z data PRM. And now just so this works better with the hardware, I think I'll make a button to open this screen. You should do that for certification purposes. I'll go from the setup screen and put in a little square button that says my screen and set the command here to commands on release, new command screen. We will open the screen called my screen and I want to open it as a pop-up. Okay, okay. Now actually come to think of it, this button should be on the auto screen so that we stay in production mode. So I'm going to cut it out of here, go to the auto screen and paste it in here somewhere. That looks like a good spot. Now I'm also remembering that this first symbol was the template and I never did add the axis X bits. Let's go to the properties of this one and find GX data PRM. Now I will launch this from the auto screen and you do want to use the regular start project so that you have communications. Yes to save. Let's turn on the servos here and start this motion. So we have something to look at. Looks like it's working properly here. I'll go into my screen and I can watch the individual velocity torque and position for each axis. And with this, I conclude arrays, structures, and symbols. Thank you for watching this video. And please go to www.yaskawa.com HMI for more information on Yaskawa's HMI products and Movicon HMI editor.